Right now, we're going to be playtesting the Furk Rag Precon. We just got done opening up the boxes. We're playtesting all the Precons. So all the videos will be on the channel. And I just got done sleeving the deck and we're just going to see how this, uh, how this deck plays. Thank you for liking the video. I just saw that. Just keep in mind that if you are not aware, we do have a, if you're looking for a Magic the Gathering community to join, you can join the Discord. The Discord people work together to build commander decks, and uh, you're more than welcome to join. This is a family-friendly channel, so if you're chill with that vibe, you're more than welcome to join. Three, four, five, six, seven. So, we're going to draw here. And we have a Reigns of Power. Cool. Stuffy Doll. Reigns of... Yeah, Reigns of Power. Stuffy Doll. Uh, command Tower. Cool. Land. Loot, Dispute, Island, Aether Gale, and a Midnight Clock. Um, guys, I think we mulligan this hand. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, Psychic Impetus. Okay, so Goad, uh, a Crow in War. Okay, Sly Instigator. Interesting. A wandering Puma roll, shiny impetus, island, and a mountain. How much does our commander cost? Five. Guys, do we have creatures? Do we mulligan again? Do we keep this? I'm thinking we mulligan again. We don't even have a creature. I mean, technically, like, we can use our. We have one creature that costs four. I mean, this is. I think I'm just gonna keep this. We can. Our opponent's creatures are our creatures, right? Because we're playing Goad, so we'll we'll just keep this hand. So I'm gonna put a. We we'll probably play the shiny impetus first, so that we can get scries off, and then we'll go from there. So I'm gonna put these cards in my hand off to the side, and then we are going to just go from there. So we'll keep our lands in my hand. We will draw into an island here. And we're going to play this tap, the Wandering Fumarole. Fumarole, and we'll pass a turn. The tap will draw into a Bloodthirsty Blade. Okay. We'll pay two, we'll get down the Bloodthirsty Blade. Bloodthirsty Blade, uh, we pay one mana, we can attach this to an opponent's creature. And um, when they're equipped, they have plus two, plus zero. And they're goaded. Not a bad turn two play, I would say. And um, we're gonna go ahead and tap, untap, and draw into a castle of Vantress. Okay. So I think we get down the mountain here. And. I think that I want a creature to play or something, so I'm gonna get down to Shiny Impetus right now on an opponent's creature so that they're goaded and then whenever they attack, uh, we get to scry too. So we'll do that. Heavy on the goad here, guys. Heavy on the goad. And then um, we do have an extra two lands in our hand, so ramp is not something that I'm... And I don't really have anything I want to play either. So we'll just pass the turn. We'll say that somebody... Uh, creature attacks that we goaded. And we'll scry into a reliquary tower and a mountain. I think we bottomed the both of these cards, guys. And then we will untap. And then we're going to go ahead and draw for turn, which is a desolate lighthouse. Blooded. Um, do we just play around our desolate lighthouse right now? This costs three mana for us to draw a card and discard a card. I also do have an Acro in War. And a shiny impetus and a sly instigator. Or do we play Furkrag? And we play Furkrag. 
interesting turn right now. I think we just play the island. We'll hold on to these two lands. How about we... Whenever one or more dragons you control attack an opponent, go target creature that player controls. Whenever a creature does combat damage to one of your opponents, the creature had to attack this combat. Put a counter on Furkrag. Let's make sure that our opponent goads many times. So let's just play a shiny impetus. So we'll go one, two, three. We'll shiny impetus something, and then we'll pay one mana, and then we'll goad something else with the Bloodthirsty Blade. And then we're going to go ahead and pass a turn there. The only way we have to draw cards right now would technically be uh, Burkrag, so we're, we're going to set that up. So we'll pass our opponent's creatures, let's say they attack, so we're going to scry two first. Care keep Kiga. I don't know if Kiga seems really random right now. In a care keep Kiga, when he dies, we gain control of target creature. I just don't know if that's necessarily the play here. Because technically, we kind of have control over the board. Our, our opponent's creatures are our creatures, kind of. Um, so I think we hold off on that. I'm going to put these both in the bottom. I'm going to be honest, I'm not too sure what I'm looking for exactly. This creature is going to attack, so we're going to create our treasure tokens. Just here. And we get how many of them? A treasure tokens? We get one. I'll leave that penny right there. And then, um, we're going to go ahead and untap and draw into a curse of the swine we'll play our castle vantress right now and i think now is when we play um i think we play fur crack now so this is one two three four five we'll hold on to our treasure token and now Furkrag enters the battlefield. And with Furkrag in the battlefield, we're going to go ahead and say that. Well, he has haste. So we'll attack an opponent right now. And. Um, the creature that our opponent has is goaded because we attacked that opponent. And then now it's going to be our turn. We're going to pass a turn. So this creature attacks, we scry two. Reigns of power and the angler tide. Yeah. I mean, like, in this situation, what are we even looking for, really? Like... We need a way to protect Furkrag, I think. Because if we lose Furkrag right now, that would just not be good. I think he only if he hits and he had to be and he had to attack. So, but yeah, when this hits, because let's say that hits where we are scrying, technically I'm going to scry too. I'm going to put both these cards in the bottom just because like, I just don't really want this. And then now we get a counter on Furkrag, which is going to be this, uh, this dime. And then we're going to draw a thunder dragon. That's interesting. Yeah, I think, Nicola, I think you're, uh... I also could just be bad at piloting the deck, too. So I don't really know what I'm looking for, either. So that's a fair point. And then we get another treasure token. And then he's gonna get another counter. So we're gonna add another, uh... It's not a dime. A dime to Furkrag. So Furkrag's a 5-5. Five, five. 
This creature attacks. We do get to draw another card. And we have a mountain here. And then... Um, we're going to get to... We drew two cards. Technically, we need to draw three because there are three good creatures. And it's another mountain. So we'll untap right now. I'm gonna wipe the board after this turn, guys, just so you're aware. Somebody, we're just gonna imagine our opponent's gonna wipe the board. We're gonna go ahead and draw for turn into a clip. Ooh, what is this, guys? Look at this. Commander creatures have, you own, wait, what? Pay two mana, sacrifice an artifact, put a plus and plus encounter on this creature and draw a card. Oh, this is the cool card. So we're gonna play the mountain. How can we do this right now? Yeah, I think we uh, pay two mana. We're gonna play our clan crafter. Let's get this to focus. Jose, what's good, Jose? Guys, say what's good to Jose. I think Jose is new in the chat. I don't think I've ever seen Jose before. So we have a. Uh, Clan Crafter. Thank you for saying hi to Jose if you do. We're going to pay two mana here. We're going to sacrifice one of the treasures to put a counter on Furkrag. And then um, let me grab another dime here. We're going to do this twice, actually. So I'm going to grab two dimes. So Furkrag is now a 6-6. Six, six. He's a 7-7. Seven, seven. And now he's at 8-8, eight, eight, and we draw two cards. So one, is it Boilerworks? And two, a Territorial Hellkite. But we have no treasures right now. And then we're going to go to combat. And then we're going to attack with Furkrag, goading our opponent's creature. And then let's just say our opponent takes one, two, three, four, five. That's eight. That's eight damage. So... That happened. And then we're just going to go and say that we pass a turn and then our opponent wipes the board. So because the board just got wiped, we're going to lose our Furkrag. Furkrag goes to the end zone and we lose these enchantments. This will go into the graveyard. And then Scheming Symmetry, you get the tutor for a card and I play Wrath of God. I get the tutor for a card right now? Okay, I'll tutor for I'll tutor for a card. I'm tutoring for the card, guys. Because I was told that I was allowed to. So what do we tutor for? Ooh, this is interesting. What do we get? <laughs> Reverse damage and gain that life. <laughs> what are we looking for right now? Like, we just do we want a way to just. How do we end the game as quickly as possible? Wait a minute. Speaking of that, whenever a creature an opponent controls attacks one of your opponents, double its power to the end of turn. Nah, not that one. Duffy Doll, not a dissipation field. Draku Seth, Avatar of Slaughter. Guys, I think we take the. Joe, that is very intelligent. Do we play around? Do we take the Avatar of Slaughter, get Furkrag to be really big, and then cast him, and then just deal double damage, essentially? Um, I think Guys, I, I think in a, in a in a battle cruiser game In a battle cruiser game, I think that I take the avatar of slaughter I'm taking the avatar of slaughter that that's potentially game winning I'm gonna shuffle
then we're gonna put this there. We're gonna put this into our hand. We'll, we'll untap and we'll draw for turn. Draw into a Dracuseth. Oh wow, the dragons. There's a lot of dragons, guys. We're gonna get down the mountain. Guys, how many cards did I have in hand? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I think I was supposed to discard a card, so I'm gonna discard this if it boiler works. So now I think it's interesting because let's say somebody wiped the board. I think what we can do right now is how much mana do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, okay. So how about. How about we just. All right, we're going in hot, guys. We're going in hot. We're gonna go seven mana, and we're gonna play Dracoseth. So Dracoseth, when Dracoseth enters the battlefield, it's gonna deal four damage to any target and three damage to each of the two other target creatures. So let's just say we wipe the board essentially when we cast our Dracoseth. We're gonna destroy multiple creatures when he enters the battlefield. He doesn't have haste, so we're just gonna pass the turn there. And then we will untap and draw. And then we look at a Curse of Opulence. Oh, okay. A Desolate Lighthouse. You know what I want right now, guys? I'm going to pay a red. I'm going to cast Curse of Opulence on myself. Actually, why would I do that? Because nobody can attack me because I'm going to be goading everything. So why would I cast this on myself? I, the only reason I'm so used to doing that is because when I play Curse of Opulence, I play this in my Thantis, the Warweaver deck. And Thantis, I always place this on myself so that people attack me when I have Thantis in play. Because it gives me a treasure and it buffs Thantis. Which is fun. So let's just say we play this on an opponent because that's fun. We still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana left over. Let's say our opponents played more creatures. And then we're going to tap down seven. We're going to play a Thunder Dragon. Which, uh, when it enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to each creature without flying. So essentially, we destroy all the creatures again. And now we're going to go to combat and we're going to deal seven damage to somebody with Dracoseth. And then we're going to pass the turn. We don't get anything off the Curse of Opulence because Thunder Dragon destroyed things. And then we're gonna untap and draw again. Yo, Thantis is... <laughs> Thantis is a fun card, dude. We'll draw into a... What is this? Artificer class. In the future, I'm taking this card out of the deck. This wants to be in an artifact deck. Not in this deck. Um, we have no lands to play this turn. Technically, I could get down the Avatar of Slaughter and deal 14 and then 10 damage right now. So that's 24 damage. And I think that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to end the playtest there. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I'm going to play Avatar of Slaughter. When Avatar of Slaughter enters the battlefield, all the creatures have all creatures have double strike and attack each combat if able. And then I'm going to go to combat and I'm going to attack somebody with the Thunder Dragon and Dracoseth. That's 14 damage. And then this is 10, which is 24, which is definitely just knock somebody out of the game. And then we'll keep it like that. And that's um uh, that's Furkrag. So I think that um somebody in chat was talking and they were saying that this deck needs like a um a focus. You know? I'm gonna be low-key honest right now and say that I I think that this deck is gonna perform really well. I think this deck is gonna be really good. These cards are bombs. Dracoseth is a bomb. Thunder Dragon is a bomb. They're just board wipes when they enter the battlefield. 
you can take your opponent's creatures you can force your opponent's creatures to attack here you know with the goad so like your opponent's creatures are technically your creatures and the dragons are just if your if your opponents have their creatures tapped down they can't block your creatures and but but if i was attacking with one one it wouldn't matter but when i'm attacking with like five fives in the air i think that it, it it can be kind of devastating. I think outside of the pre-con meta, I think that... I don't think this would do that well, per se. But um, I think against other pre-cons, I think it would do well. I'm going to give this deck a 7 out of 10. I'm going to say that this deck is worth buying if you already have an understanding of how you want to upgrade this deck. Otherwise, like if you plan on building this deck right out of the box, or playing this deck out of the box and thinking you can just go compete against people against their constructed decks that they've built i think this deck could potentially struggle i mean it could compete well because it's goad and you're not necessarily you don't need creatures when you're goading things however um with avatar slaughter really being the only win condition technically um just like on the spot like oh i'm dealing a ton of damage now um, I think that the deck could struggle to close out games, and especially in a 1v1 situation where Burkrag is dependent upon creatures to be goaded to become strong, I think um, it could be difficult for this deck to win games. So, 7 out of 10. Still worth buying, but you just gotta know what you're doing. You, ha you need a plan before you buy it, I would say.